I'm Laura with Mural Dreams and I want you to make art. You see, I think everyone can be creative and has a huge potential to express themselves, everybody has something to say or a creative itch to scratch. And I've heard some of you that you don't think that, that you think you have no creative bone in you or you're just not artistic. Well, I'm here to differ. And in this video, I'll be showing you, a beginner, how easy it is to make abstract art with no prior training. And I'll be going over the materials you need to use and different options, how to prepare your space, exterior and interior, things to remember before, during and after your pour. And if you are enjoying yourself, stick around to the end and I'll be sharing with you a couple of bits of wisdom and what I've learned from my acrylic pouring experience. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And let's just dive right in with the paints that you need to use to make acrylic pour. Um, there are basically three optimal kinds of paints to use. Um, the bottle paints that you can get from any stores. This is from Blix Art Materials. You can get this from Amazon. You can get this from Michaels. Flow Acrylic, Bottle Paint, Montmartre, Studio Bottle Paint. These are all stu student paints. They're great for pouring paint. Um, then we have, if you're starting small and you just want to give it a try and you don't want to invest a whole lot in it, you can always try these. And these are really inexpensive, two, three dollars a piece and you can make a wonderful painting with it. Another kind of paint would be the student uh, tube paints like the Ar Artist Loft or you can use Liquitex Basics. These are great, they are a little different consistency than the other two, they're a little thicker so you need to add a little more water when you mix these. And I'll show you how all these different paints perform. Then we have our pouring medium or the substance that helps the paint be fluid and, and pour onto the canvas and flow. Um, my favorite thing to use is this Flood Floatrol, which you can get from any hardware store. You can even order it on Amazon, but I recommend Home Depot or Lowe's. It's much more inexpensive. Um, I usually get the gallon size, but this is easy to handle just for the purposes. Always make sure that you shake it a lot before you use it and that you strain it with a strainer or you can um, strain it with some pantyhose or any kind of netting um, because it makes little strings and you don't want those in your painting. And then if you don't want to try this, you can always do with Elmer's glue if you have it around. I don't really like to use this, but if that's what you have, start anywhere and anything is a great experiment. Another thing to use, which is also great, only it's a little more expensive, is the Liquitex a pouring medium. Um, this makes, um, it's a wonderful, great quality archival of pouring medium that will uh, last you for a long time, it'll give you a nice glossy sheen on your artwork. But I use Floetrol, I usually experiment a lot and I learn a lot and if there's a, <laughs> if there's a technique that I really want to recreate, I will purchase the pouring medium and invest in that. Next we have our canvas because of course you have to pour on something. So you can pour, uh, I'm gonna show you three techniques today. Um, on three different canvases. These are eight inches by 10 inches. Any size is good for a beginner. Then I have a little uh, kitchen scale over here. Uh, this is totally optional. You don't have to use this if you don't want to, but um, in the beginning it helped me to, uh, to figure out the ratio and to measure the paints. And now I just eyeball my paints, just like a regular um, cooking recipe. Then you're gonna need some cups. Sometimes I use uh, plastic cups, sometimes I use paper cups. Um, so it's a matter of preference. I do reuse my cups so as to not be so uh, wasteful because this method is a little wasteful and um, you go through a lot of products. Um, so you can use stirring sticks to stir your paints, either these um, wooden, larger sticks, you can use smaller sticks, whoopsie, 
but I usually like to reuse my my spatula so I just got a whole bunch of little um, metal spatulas this one is my favorite because it's nice and uh, wide so it mixes the paint very nicely but I have several uh, many sizes and then you're really gonna want some paper towels or something to wipe I have a whole bunch of rags that I made from old shirts this is great and I have this um, a water bottle and what I use this for is for spritzing my backside of the canvas like this just give it a couple of spritzes and this will help the canvas stay um, stay taut and tight so that the paint doesn't sag in the middle of the canvas and I'm gonna just go ahead and do this right now for for these other ones when I start painting they'll be nice and dry so always spritz the back of your canvas especially if it's a bigger canvas uh, the smaller ones sometimes it does matter sometimes it doesn't but here we go nice and taut then what I'm gonna do I also have some push pins here you can use push pins to give your canvas some feet so as to not be uh, straight on the table but you can also prop up your canvas with some extra cups so you can use that if you don't have push pins it's not necessary what is necessary however is gloves use gloves you're gonna get your hands really dirty <laughs> and it's also helpful to to wear clothes that you don't care so much about a torch is also useful um, this pops the air bubbles at the end of the process also if you want and you like the effects you can use a little bit of silicone I have some silicone here just treadmill silicone that I bought off of Amazon for uh, a while ago so you can use silicone if you want it's not necessary by all means it's also helpful to have some tweezers around just in case something falls into your painting and you can just pick it up right away sometimes accidents happen and underneath it all there is a plastic tablecloth so make sure to pad your surface so you don't make a mess wherever you are you cover and you protect your your uh, surface this black tablecloth is a one dollar cloth that I got from the dollar store um, I cut it in half so that's two uses and then sometimes I let the paint dry and I turn it upside down and I use it again that's four uses out of a one dollar tablecloth so you can do that if you don't destroy it <laughs> they're not very they're not very sturdy if you're already getting value out of this please make sure to subscribe to my channel to, and ring the notification bell in order to get all the videos when they're released before you start make sure that your table is level and that your canvas is level some canvases come warped so be sure that it doesn't wobble on the table it doesn't go bum 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 see it's all nice and level and to prepare our canvases we're gonna attach we're gonna stick some push pins in their bottoms to give them some legs so that when we pour the paint the paint doesn't drip on the tablecloth so I have here a whole bunch of pre-used push pins I can use the pre-used ones just make sure that all of the push pins are all the same size that they are not mismatched all of the <laughs> all of the materials and all of the supplies will be in the description below make sure to check them out to push all of the pins the same exact height sometimes you may need to use a hammer to hammer them in if the wood is too hard okay now make sure that all of your push pins are in the same the same length the same depth so your canvas isn't wobbly Now, take a deep breath. <sighs> Smile. This time, it's for yourself. Enjoy it. Okay, a quick word about all of the paint. Um, aside from, aside from the brands and the 
consistency of the paint, there's another thing to keep in mind. The opaqueness and the transparency of the paint. For example, if you have a transparent paint like this cadmium yellow, by the way, you're gonna see this right here on the back, it says transparency, light fastness, it says translucent, for example, this um, purple says opaque. So if you have a transparent paint, uh, make sure that you use something opaque and light to support it and to help it show in your painting. Otherwise, it can get lost on top of some dark, dark paints like black. For example, this yellow will totally kind of disappear on top of the black or on top of a darker paint. So I have here this a bright aqua green which is opaque and this will help it pop and that's that for the opaque opaques and translucents now let's start mixing our paints let's start with these craft paints we're gonna start with Floetrol and one thing you should know is the ratio the ratio of paint to the ratio of pouring medium so Usually I use one part paint, two parts pouring medium, and then depending on the consistency and the thickness of the paint, I will add or not add some water. So, okay, another thing you should know, how much paint are you gonna need for a canvas? In general, um, a, an easy rule of thumb is four ounces of paint to 100 square inches. So this canvas is eight by 10 inches, that's 80 square inches. So I'm gonna need roughly just under four ounces of paint. Uh, and it's always better to have more paint um, than you need than less paint because leftover paints are a blessing. You can just make a unique and outstanding canvas with leftover paints. So let's start mixing. Um, these cups are three ounce cups. You can get them from any supermarket and I plan to put one ounce of mixed paint in each cup. So I'm gonna put one ounce of paint in each of paint mixture in each cup. So I'm gonna start with this antique copper. I'm gonna put 0.3 ounces and then 0.6 ounces of pouring medium. One, two, Three. Of course, it's not a tragedy if you get it a little, if you get it a little bit over. Like I said, it's, it's just the guide. And then, like I said, I'm gonna strain my flow trowel through a sieve like this. I'm gonna go up to one ounce. Also, shake the paints as well. I have here teal. And you want to mix your paints for a fairly long time. Mix them for a couple of minutes. Make sure that all of the paint and the flowing medium is, they're all blended together. I'm gonna add a couple of spritzes of water to this because it's a little thicker than I had expected. Just a couple of spritzes of water. And the paint makes a temporary mound and then it mixes, it blends right in the paint. And this is what you're looking for. And even within one brand of paints, some paints have a different consistency than others. Some are thinner than other paints, so you kind of have to gauge it on, on feel. Ultimately, you're looking for paint that makes a slight mount when you pour it, drizzle it off the stick, and then it blends in 
with the rest of the paint. actually going to make a little more white paint um, because that's going to be my my base coat. I'm going to put more paint in here and some more pouring medium, some more Floetrol. So two to one, hopefully. I measured right. And I just mix it up because this will be my base coat. The base coat always helps the paint slide more smoothly and glide onto the canvas and it maintains your composition and uh, it's a huge help. Usually the base coat is also a little bit thinner so after I use this paint for my cup I'll be thinning it out with a little bit of water right before I pour. Let's test these bottle paints. These are also great, you can buy them in bulk, they will last you forever. And I'm just going to eyeball this time, I'm not going with a scale, but if you want to be precise, you can always use the scale. Just going to cover a little bit of my bottom. And the base coat for this will be black, so I'm going to be making more black. Well, it's actually going to be a swipe, so it's not a base coat per se. But I am making more black. gonna be doing a swipe with these. I actually forgot the silver. I also have a silver. So I have a gold, a copper and a silver in here from, from Blix. And I have some white from Artist Loft and some black from, from Montmartre. So it's okay to mix your brands. Just make sure that all of your paints have the same consistency. That's like the big, the biggie, the big rule. All of your paints have the same consistency because if you don't then your canvas they they will run differently and then your canvas will have all sorts of textures in the end because the paints will separate they'll dry at different times and they'll leave different uh, they will dry at different thicknesses and sometimes it's actually cool and it's an interesting effect to go for Especially if you do like a ring pour where you can have like a tree ring texture, that can be pretty cool. But in general, you want to go for the same consistency. That'll help the paints flow evenly as well. See that um, the metallic sometimes tend to be a little thicker. So these bottle paints are slightly thicker than the craft paints. I'm gonna need to add a little bit more water to this. Two spritzes instead of one. Two, three, four spritzes. Depends on the paint and just eyeball it. And feel how the paint is flowing. It leaves a small mound, then it sinks in and it blends with the rest of the paint. Make sure that you paint, you mix your paint enough. So this Floetrol is white, it has a milky appearance but it dries completely clear. So you can see how it added some uh, milkiness to the copper paint 
and to the met metallic um, silver, but don't worry, it, it's gonna disappear. It'll clear up as it dries and even as it um, lays in the cup for a little bit. Blacks and the whites tend to be a little bit thicker than the rest of the paints in general, all across the board for all of paints. So we're gonna need to put a little bit more water in here and that seems to be okay. these paints. These tube paints will always be thicker than the other options. So you will need to add more water to these. And check it out. I have some dioxins in purple in here. Do you see how these just sit at the bottom of the cup? They won't even flow if you turn it upside down. They're completely on the bottom. They're really kind of thick. So you need more water with these. I have Artist Loft, also um, student paint, brilliant blue. I think I should have put on my gloves before I started this, you know what? <laughs> For these paints, I did add a little bit more Floetrol than the others because they are thicker. So let's say I added two and a half parts Floetrol to these. And then stir vigorously, but mindfully. Just enjoy, enjoy seeing the colors before your eyes. Enjoy seeing these beautiful healing colors and of course you can always get pre-mixed paints anytime you want from Michaels, from Amazon, they have kits. Check in the description down below, I will point you to a kit that you can use. But I really enjoy the process if you're serious about starting this journey and continuing with it because it is an addictive art form, it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, if you want to continue with this, it's so much more economical to get the paints and get the pouring medium separately. Uh, but it's always an option. So do you see how after just the flow trawl, look at this, it's so thick. You can even see the mound lingering for a longer time. So this is going to need more water than the other paint, even with more flow trawl. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, I added about, I don't know, a millimeter of water in here. Let's say about maybe 5%, maybe th three to 5% of water. So not a lot of water. Don't, don't go crazy about um, diluting it too much. But even this is a little thick. So I'll go one, two, three, four. You just wanna make your paint you want to get the feel of the paint and once you get how it should feel then you can use any kind of paint and make it the right consistency no matter what medium you're using so here we go a little, still a little bit thick so so let's say I use like 10% maybe 7 to 10% water in here
with just the medium kind of thick. Another way you can test is you move the cup side to side and you see the amount of jiggle it gives. You see, not so much jiggle here, but here, quite a bit of jiggle. See? Not so much, but more. These other ones, they have jiggle. So you want your paint to jiggle, but you don't want your paint to jiggle too much. You still want it to make a little mound when you pour it over. You want it to have a body, but you want it to also flow, not fold onto itself. So we're gonna be adding about six spritzes of water. The reason why I use a water spritzer is because it I can control the amount of water that I put in. Having paints that are, that are too thin can destroy the composition of your, or of your painting or um, you just kind of lose the definition of the shapes you're trying to make. Okay, now that we have our canvas sounding like a drum, we have a level table, we have our mixed paints that are all the same consistency, now we're ready to start. But before we start, I want you to repeat, maybe whisper to yourself, I am creative. I am creative. I can do this. Breathe deep. and enjoy the show. As you let your paint wait, they can also thicken between the time that you mix them and the time that you're actually pouring. They can thicken up on you, so check them before you put them in your cup. As I said, we need just about four ounces of paint for this. Mm. This is a nine ounce cup, so I guess it's just under a half a cup. This copper is gorgeous. I don't know if you can see it over there, but it's a gorgeous copper. And then I'm gonna put a tiny little bit more white. Let me put some white here on the top so that all the paints are laying on the white. The last paint that you put in will be the first paint that will be on the bottom. I usually advise that when you do a flip cup, you kind of fill the cup as much as you can. But you know what? I'm all for an experiment, so let's see what happens. And now check this out. We put the canvas on top, we hold it with the hand, and we turn it upside down. Then we wait a little bit for the paint to settle down, to pour down the sides, 
and in the meantime I'm going to layer uh, some base coat onto my canvas. The base coat helps the paint glide more smoothly onto the surface and it helps maintain your composition. After about a minute, then I'm going to torch it. Torching pops the air bubbles on top, thus preventing little pox when it dries. So you want all those air bubbles that happens when you mix in the paint, it helps pop them so that you don't have texture when your canvas is all dry. You want to torch at about a distance of 5-6 inches away and move it swiftly so that you don't burn the surface of the canvas. Then when you have had enough of torching, you can slightly tilt. always want to bring back the weight of the paint back to the center when you tilt. You have to tilt off a certain amount of paint so that your canvas dries evenly and you do have to decide what part you're gonna keep and what part you're gonna abandon. I really like that aqua turquoise. I don't want to get rid of that. I'm also really fond of this part over here. But I do have to stretch it. done tilting make sure that you scrape the bottom of your canvas with your finger or a spatula to take all of the excess paint that is dripping off and you can give it another torching that will pop even more bubbles pour is a little bit more structured, uh, meaning in the way that I will be pouring the paint into the cup. So I'll be pouring all of the paint through one place right here um, and kind of like layer after layer after layer and this is called the straight pour.
Okay, so the third method that I'm gonna be showing you is the swipe. So first I'm going to put some base coat onto my canvas because I'm gonna, we're gonna be using silicone in this one and I want my base coat to not have silicone. So I'm just gonna brush a really thin coat of non-silicone paints onto the canvas so that I, I'm not left with uh, bare spots because if I'm gonna put the silicone directly on the canvas, the silicone paint, uh, I might run the risk of having spots on my canvas without any paint because the silicone will prevent the paint from sticking to the canvas. So I'm just gonna put a nice black coat of black. <laughs> nice black coat of black. And here is my silicone. I don't want to overdo it just want to put one drop of silicone in each color so one 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 and one uh, two two dropped in in my silver I'm gonna put two in my black because there's more black than there's more black paint in there, there we go. oh yes I need to stir we need to stir the paint before we can use it Go. Nice stirring, not too much, just a little bit. Don't need to go crazy with the stirring. Remember to breathe and to just be thankful that you have this time for yourself, you have the supplies. It's such a blessing to have painting supplies. <laughs> such a blessing. We're so lucky to be so pampered. going very lightly. I'm not scraping all the way to the bottom, just grazing the surface and kind of glazing the paint over. The next paints. <sighs> Boy, remember to breathe. This concentration can really make you forget about that.
So what to do after the pour? Take a deep breath and be proud of yourself. You committed to a task, you prepared all the steps, you completed it, and now there's so much magic in front of you to be explored and take your time, look at your canvases, look, find all the patterns in there, imagine, explore, it's a universe beyond any other universes. Then, on a more realistic level, put your, put your paintings on a level surface so they don't drip, the paint doesn't drip over, so that they maintain their composition and they dry the same way they look right now. Although, they will change. Then, wash your cups and reuse them as many times as you can because it's good to not be wasteful. It can be a very wasteful form of art, but with a little bit of insight and work, you can do it. Share your creation and be prepared to embark on an artistic journey. Did I forget to mention that acrylic pouring is like a gateway form of art? So what has acrylic pouring taught me? Well, for one, that nothing is under control or your control or my control. You can prepare for the steps, which is really good. You can prepare as much as you can and envision what you want to do, but ultimately your flow art will not be the way you expected it to be. So don't get too attached, especially when you pull up your, your cup. It will change. Once you tilt that, that painting, everything is gonna be different. And while it dries also, a lot of things will pop up, a lot of things will shift and evolve, and just be open. It, beautiful things are happening. Sometimes what happens is even better than what you were looking for. Just experiment. After you've learned a couple of techniques, in anything really, then you really have to delve in, dive in and do your own thing. And you'll, you'll be a happier person for it. Just do it your own way. Sometimes things happen just like that and better than you thought. Sometimes you catch a big one, but you have to keep your curiosity alive and pay attention and slow down and be open to discoveries. Your outer world reflects your inner world. Acrylic pouring is one of the least judgmental forms of art. It's a place where you can let go of your expectations and enjoy the entire process and ultimately make art that will surprise you. And all of the materials and supplies are in the description down below. If you've enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something, please subscribe to my channel and share it on your social media. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. What do you want to learn next? Let's have a conversation. I'll be back next week with more art ideas and experiments and challenges that'll nurture our artistic journey together. Until then, my friend, trust the flow. How to prepare, how to create it, age to scratch. See you soon.